Welcome once again to Along the Rio Grande. I'm George Torok, and today we have one of El Paso's best known and most honored artists in the studio with us. Uh, he recently was named a Westerners International Living Legend. He's done countless works of illustration, countless works of art in the area. It's a great honor to welcome Mr. Jose Cisneros. Mr. Cisneros, welcome to our program Along the Rio Grande. Thank you. Uh, I thought we'd talk a little bit today about uh, how you became interested in art, how you started uh, drawing. It's a long journey from uh, where you came in uh, central Mexico up to El Paso and through the years all of the works that you've done. Uh, you were born into the time of the Mexican Revolution, correct? Could you well, tell us a little bit about that? In fact, I was born before the Mexican Revolution. Ah, before it even began. Mm -hmm. And as a child, do you have uh, memories of things taking place during those years? Yes, it was a very happy life with my family. But then uh, it came the revolution, but it didn't affect us at the beginning, probably for the first uh, five or six years. Mm. My father had his house, and uh, he was uh, uh, Jack of all trades was a carpenter, uh -huh. uh, a musician, and a barber, and a blacksmith. Oh, so. And he had his uh, shop very well equipped and so on. So I thought that I, I cannot remember that long when I was uh, uh, very young, but uh, when the revolution started, it didn't affect us for several years, but then they began to, probably in the 1915s, the both sides began to loot uh, the towns and ah. take away things from the people. And uh, in 1918, my f they uh, took us out of the houses and they, uh, the holes trying to find uh, money and oh. arms and so on. So we were chased away from the house and uh, they looted everything we had and my father lost everything. So we uh, uh, were uh, driven uh, to find a place to live because uh, they uh, completely destroyed uh, everything that uh, most of the people in town had. So where did your family go to? We went to the last uh, railroad station in, uh, from Parral to, uh, to Rosario was the last. So we went there on foot with nothing on us, and um, we then when we were in Rosario, my my father was taken by the revolutionists uh, on a force, mm. and we were left uh, my mother and two brothers in uh, in Rosario, and uh, we did what we could to survive. There was no food, nothing to depend on. And is this when you got to Valle de Allende? No, we went to Parral and uh, finally uh, we landed in another uh, railroad station, Vaca, oh. between Jimenez and, uh, and, and Parral, because uh, and my uncle had lost all of his belongings also in, uh, in another railroad station, Dorado. So we went to Dorado, and uh, we found all the, in ruins the, the house of my uncle. He had been uh, uh, forced to come to the to Juarez. Ah. So we stay in Dorado, but uh, at that time I was already uh, 11 years old, and I didn't go to school. But when you were even that young. Uh, you were beginning to experiment with drawing? You were Another uncle that I had in Valle de Allende came to visit us 
But at that time, I had learned to read on a syllabarium. And, it was oh. a, and uh, I, I could read by that time, but I haven't been to school yet. So he took me to his uh, house in Valle de Allende. That's where I uh, got uh, four years of um, elementary school. And that was all my education in Mexico. When I came here to Juarez, I was uh, 15 years already. And those four years that I had in Valle de Allende, I had to repeat them here in uh, El Paso at Lydia Patterson Institute here. And, and uh, during that, the time that you were in uh, elementary school, though, uh, you were inspired by some of your teachers, though, correct? The interest in correct. history developed at that time? At by the end, there was uh, the director of the school that uh, used to give us a normal class on uh, Mexican history. Oh. And uh, I, I was fascinated by his uh, descriptions of the colonial time and the types that used to be in uh, the uh, the importance of the town that we uh, were living in because Oñate started from by the Allende his expedition. So this is where you first uh, became aware of the Oñate expedition mm -hmm. and the importance of that expedition. And since then I began to have interest in uh, uh, horses and horsemanship and began to draw horses on whatever I could find because everything was uh, scarce at that time. So how did you um, start drawing? What kinds of things did you do well, to practice like to, drawing? Uh, since I was uh, small, probably six years old, I began to draw figures on whatever I could. What were you drawing on at that time? You didn't have yeah, you papers and pencils, I assume. No. Usually uh, figures that one invent when it's a child. Ah, so you did some sketches even as a child. But I was, uh, after I began to go to school, I began to get fascinated with books hmm. and began to acquire little booklets because they had illustrations. And those were my, I, begin, uh, I think, my first teachers. And what did your family think about your interest in drawing? Did they think that this was going to be something very productive? No, they thought that I uh, was uh, entertaining myself by doing ah, that. So they didn't they, take, uh, they didn't see much, the talent there? No, because I, I didn't uh, show much because it was really entertaining to me because I liked to do it. You saw some pictures and various magazines, uh, the Revista de Revistas, uh, for example, and uh, you became interested in maybe doing some illustration work. How, how did that develop? Well, that came uh, when we came to what is the time began to acquire uh, the Saturday Evening Post. At uh, that time, it, it was just uh, a nickel for ah. a copy and just to clip all of the pictures that I like and store them for reference. So that's why I began to get uh, more interested in the history of our region here. And you use these uh, pictures as a way to uh, practice your own drawings and develop different themes? So, so you're basically a self-taught artist. You don't have any formal training. No, no, the uh, handicap that I have is that I'm colorblind. Ah. So how did you produce so many beautiful color pictures over the Well, I, uh, I started by uh, using colors, by seeing the name of the color in, even in the tube or in the pencil, and that's how I applied it. So and it was I, almost... And it uh, depended on the intensity of the, the color. The, I, I didn't have a notion of uh, distinguish one from another, but uh, the intensity of the color guide me. What were some of the first things that you produced in Ciudad Juarez when you came up to this area? What kinds of drawings did you well, begin to show? Yeah, I did began to do faces of different uh, people's imaginary faces. Ah. Because also I never been able to work from life. Uh, I, I have not been trained to 
copy from life. Ah, so you tend to use your imagination mm -hmm. a lot in these works. And when you were in Ciudad Juarez and when you were here in El Paso, you started to have some contact with some of the artists working in this region? Uh, I who, never who had any, co any contact with any artist except on my meeting uh, with uh, Tom Lee. Ah. Because I was uh, uh, afraid to show my work to real artists and uh, I was afraid to discuss color because I couldn't... Ah. Uh, what did Tom Lee see in your work? He inspired you? He encouraged you? Well, uh, I, I was uh, afraid to show it to him. And one time, at that time, I was working at the White House uh, department store. Department stores, yes. And uh, I used to use the backside of the signs that they used there to do my pictures. Oh. And, uh, one time I got all my better ones and had the courage to face Tom Lee, who was working in the uh, courthouse. Mm -hmm. and, uh, was he working on the mural at that time? Okay. And you and, took your drawing there to him? And uh, I, I was very much afraid to face him, but uh, once he, I saw a smile in his face, I knew that uh, he liked them. <laughs> yeah. So he was very much interested in my work. And right away, he took um, a piece of the tracing paper that he was using on the walls. Mm -hmm. And on that, he wrote a note to uh, Mrs. Maud Sullivan to give me an exhibit at the library. Oh, so your works were exhibited uh, fairly early. What types of works were shown there at the library? At that what time, things had done? Well, at that time, I was uh, already very much interested in uh, history and already had begun to do Oñate. And oh, his. so these were the historical sketches already mm -hmm. that you were working on. Great. Um, you run into Carl Herzog. Are you introduced to him through Tom Lee? Tom Lee introduced me to Carl Herzog, and uh, we began to do little jobs, but uh, it was the depression, and uh, uh, we couldn't do much. Not until uh, after the war, we really, we encountered again, and then we began to illustrate, and I illustrated most of the books that he published at Texas Western Press. So this gave you a few years to kind of work with your style and mm -hmm. work with your format. And by the time that the uh, press was uh, uh, in shape to start publishing things again, you did in a fact, of In fact, the there. first book that was published by uh, Texas Western Press was uh, one of my books uh, that, uh, with the captions by uh, uh, Francis uh, Fugate. Are, are these the, the book, it the was Spanish Heritage book? The Spanish Heritage. Ah. And you were able to include a lot of the works that you did on the Spanish and, uh, Southwest? It's amazing because at that time, Carl couldn't sell uh, the book very well, and it was only priced at $5. Mm. And uh, many dealers now, they are asking uh, 1000 or uh, oh, really? $1,200 $1, for the, those copies that uh, Carl Herzog did. And when you were working with Mr. Uh, Herzog, did he give you particular themes that he wanted illustrated? Did oh, someone, yes. Uh, did someone designate what they very, uh, It was uh, all kinds of uh, themes of the Southwest, cowboys and uh, grasses, uh, all kinds of books that we illustrated at that time. And from the work on Spanish heritage, you went on to do many other different uh, and, uh, illustrations for him? And Tom Lee, at that time, he was so busy that he couldn't take many of the commissions that he, he uh, had. So he passed me several of the jobs that he was supposed to do, like one for, uh, 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 what's the name of the publishing? House. Uh, Bill Johnson was representative of uh, Life and, and Time magazine in Dallas, and he has written a book on the conquest of Mexico. Mm. And 
random house asked me to do the illustrations. And I did, and uh, they seemed to have liked the work. So you started to build a reputation mm -hmm. by the 1950s for dealing with this type of theme, and, uh, Western things. And then I began Spanish to do uh, illustrations for uh, uh, university presses of different uh, parts of the country, Arizona, New Mexico, many here, SMU in, in Dallas and uh, San Antonio. So I never liked uh, uh, material to do. And you got a chance to work with some fairly interesting authors, I assume, illustrate their well, works? Well, um, uh, I joined the Western History Association and I had the, the chance, the opportunity to meet uh, several of the most outstanding historians in the United States. And uh, many of them uh, asked me to do illustrations for them. And uh, through them, there was uh, Tafli Ellis from uh, uh, Austin and uh, several others that I g got acquainted with. And uh, they uh, uh, arranged that I would get a fellowship from the University of Texas to begin my uh, book on uh, writers across the centuries wow. and uh, they I spent for the first time in my life I didn't have to worry because for six months they provided me there and my family with almost everything and I had the opportunity to work on what I wanted to do all my life. This was the Paisano Fellowship that mm -hmm. was awarded in 1969. Uh, you stayed at the Doby Ranch. Yeah. And earlier, you had done some work for uh, and, uh, J. Frank Doby. Mrs. Doby was uh, very kind to us and ah. very helpful. And you did a lot of research for that work. Uh, some of the things you uh, have drawn have been from your imagination, but much of it is based on a lot of historical research. What y types of sources did you? Well, uh, as soon as I could buy uh, books, I started to build my own library, and I have a very extensive uh, research uh, library. But uh, before that, when I went to Paisano, I had the opportunity to go to uh, several places in Austin, like uh, the library of the University of Texas and the uh, library in San Marcos and San Antonio. And I made a friend with uh, Henderson uh, Schaffler, who was uh, the man that uh, 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 that built the Institute of Texan Cultures. Oh, okay. And uh, when I was at, Pais at Paisano, he offered me uh, an exhibit at the Institute of Texan Cultures in, mm -hmm. in San Antonio. And thereafter, I have heard about eight or 10 exhibits in San Antonio. Sure. Uh, when you were doing research for the Writers Project, when you were there at the Institute of Texas Cultures, uh, did you start to learn things about the Spanish that you hadn't known before? Did oh, you come yes, across I found, some details? Uh, uh, and also I made friends with uh, Dr. Carlos Castañeda, who, ah. who was in charge of the library at the uh, University of Texas. Uh, he had done some work with churches and uh, missions, I believe. Mm -hmm. And what kinds well, of things he, were you he, he did um, a very important uh, book in seven volumes. Mm. Our, Spanish, our um, Catholic heritage is the history of the missions in Texas. Oh. And it was in seven volumes, and I had the opportunity to illustrate the last uh, of the volumes in the series. Oh. And during this time, uh, you worked in some other mediums as well. You were not simply doing drawings. Uh, I understand that you did some castings and some well, uh, wax at times. I, I did some wood carvings and uh, plaster uh, and models. You've designed some logos and some, uh, some emblems for people emblems as well. And, uh, Where might we see some of those? What types of uh, emblems have you done? Well, the, the one at the university 
here. Uh, I did it step. twice when it was uh, Texas Western College and then when it became University of Texas at El Paso. Also the coat of arms at the city of Juarez and um, uh, letter here for the country club and several other people, mostly to Carl Herzog. Hmm. Now by the time that the 1970s came around, um, you were pretty well known and they had cited you as a Tejano hero at one point and by the 1980s uh, they had uh, placed you in the National Cowboy Hall of Fame because of some of your Western works and that. Well, that uh, National Cowboy Hall of Fame was uh, uh, on account of the book that Riders I did. Writers Across the Century, which is... Uh, I, I, I wrote the book and also illustrated it. Ah, so they were very impressed with the work and that's what led to the that's what led to the award. And, and it has uh, 100 uh, writers across the centuries from Mexico and the United States. There's some beautiful illustrations that are featured in that, uh, uh, featured in that work. Uh, through the 1980s and the 1990s, uh, you continued to uh, produce illustrations on some of these same themes. And well, I began to illustrate magazines and uh, a lot of uh, Western books and so on. And you did some work for the quadricentennial celebrations as well, illustrating some of the things that had taken place during and the And did uh, a lot of pictures that were um, made on prints that were used during the celebration. Sure. And this is uh, uh, the uh, another book that uh, I did for the Hidalgo County Historical Museum uh, Borderlands. in, in uh, Edinburgh, Texas. Uh, the entire collection that I did for them was put in uh, the book, and it, it is entirely in color. Oh, so these are all of your color works that were uh -huh. done. Now, how did you um, determine what colors to use on a lot of these illustrations. As I, I said, I had to some, look at the name of the color. And but I understand you had some help at times as look well. Look at this one. And I understand you had some help at times with picking the colors? My wife sometimes would uh, so help me. she was me. responsible some way for well, some of the different colors. Well, a little help to distinguish if they were too bright or too... Sure. Like that. What was your favorite project that you did out of all of them? What do you think was your uh, it, it was this uh, writers? This book on the writers. And those are the themes that you prefer more than anything, the themes that deal with horses and uh, riding. Now, fairly recently, we had some works of yours uh, displayed at the Chamisal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand that there is a book uh, in production right now that deals yeah, with some yeah, of those uh, works. This is it. And, um, Cisneros the, 2000, Faces the, of the Borderlands. This would be the covers of the book, the end papers, an introduction. By the way, I have a very beautiful introduction by uh, Tom Lee, Tom another Lee. one by uh, John Hauser, and Leon Metz, and uh, Jan West. And what was the criteria for selecting works for this book? Was it uh, sort of a compilation of things that you've done no, over the it, years? No, uh, it happened because I've been having problem with my vision. Hmm. And uh, uh, last year, I couldn't handle as well the pen as I used to uh, for uh, little details. So I decided to, uh, or rather I began to make uh, representative uh, faces uh, with a, a historical background and a sort of picturesqueness. And we have a wide variety of subjects that were featured in the exhibit and I imagine will be in the book it, it, it as well. It would take uh, 60 three almost uh, life-size uh, faces ah. in this book. And these are copies of the faces that, that would be in the book. 
Well, we'll look forward to seeing that uh, book soon. And uh, people that had a chance to uh, go to the exhibit saw a lot of uh, different uh, variety of your work. This covered kind of the whole range of characters that you've dealt with over the years. There were some well, well, it has been uh, mostly my, uh, my subject, uh, especially the colonial period in Mexico and also the pioneer period here in the United States. Terrific. Well, you certainly have had a, a wonderful collection of work that you've produced over the years, and we look forward to the book coming out, and we look forward to more uh, exhibits in the future. Uh, are there any other plans in the works at this point? Not anymore, on no. account of my uh, weak vision and my age, too. But we'll continue to see your work illustrating things, I'm sure. And um, John West did this on uh, sort of a biography of my or mine with the so if we want to learn a little bit more detail about some of your uh, works over the years and how you mm -hmm. came to El Paso and uh, worked here we can take a look at Mr. West's uh, biography it's an artist's journey mm -hmm. uh, Cisnero an artist's journey well we want to thank you very much for coming and visiting with us well, today I appreciate that very much we appreciate your coming here and sharing uh, some of your uh, stories and some of the work that you've done over the years and we want to thank you for joining us as well on Along the Rio Grande, and we hope to see all of you in our next program. El Paso Community College salutes Jose Cisneros. 2002 National Humanities Award winner.